Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Nick and I'm a South Florida Uber driver. I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of what the Tesla is like on the inside and how you can kind of set it up for yourself. So let's jump right into it. Real quick, you obviously notice that there is something different about this car compared to a conventional car. The biggest difference is that you don't have your normal uh, odometer, you don't normally, your normal like speed gauge, you don't have all of that stuff right here in the middle like you may be used to. All of that stuff is right over here. It's over here on your big iPad, as I like to call it. The iPad is basically how you pretty much do anything in a car. This is how you kind of use the everyday functions of the car, okay? So real quick, let, let's see. So right now I'm in autopilot. So you can kind of see what autopilot looks like. And you kind of see everything together. So first and foremost, over here, this is how fast I'm going. Um, so it shows you my speed that kind of fluctuates, uh, you know, with down here in traffic, kind of goes up and down. Um, so this is my speed. As you can see, this is the speed limit over here. This is my cruise control set. Now, don't mind that I don't actually go 80 miles an hour. It's just I put it up there that high because I want to go with the flow of traffic. So if I have a car in front of me, I want it to kind of adapt based on the cars in front of me. Um, you can kind of see how much space is giving anyway. So, yeah, it, it's not going to actually go 80 miles an hour. I just want to make sure that no matter what that car in front of me does, I can keep up, basically. So, this left side is how you want to kind of understand. So, while you're driving, this is the this is the side that you're going to be more so paying attention to. This right side is more is your navigation side. Again, while you're driving, you want to set your location. You want to set your destination. So, right now, I have it set for Green Turtle Club. I can set it for, I don't know. Homestead Freeway. Um, I'm going down south. Um, you can kind of set it for anything. I can set it for, uh, let's say Key West. I'll set it for Key West. So you see how I'm kind of typing? Um, and this is what you have to do. You have to kind of understand, uh, I put it for Keys Locksmith. So uh, the right side is your navigation. So you can kind of see the navigation is just like any other navigation. The only difference is that with this type of navigation, you use this navigation more so like if you're going a far distance, because obviously you want to make sure that, hey, I'm going to get there in time. I'm going to get there with enough charge. So you can see right now I'm on 16%. Do you think that I'm scared to get to where I need to get to? Let's say I'm going to Key, Key Largo or Keys, in this case, Keys uh, Locksmith. Do you think that I'm scared because I'm on 16%? No, because my GPS tells me how much percentage I'm going to get there with. So it's really important that you use the GPS for what it's worth. Um, again, I, I know a lot of people, you know, th this isn't a normal GPS. This is a GPS that is going to calculate all of the factors that you normally would, and it's going to tell you exactly how much charge you're going to be. So let me try to actually uh, get you somewhere a little bit faster. So the quickest way without trying to touch the type it in is just to use the voice command. So I guess I'll show you that real quick. Navigate to Key West. So just by using my voice, now you see it's popped up. So um, that way I can kind of just, and then you just hit that button. So it's going to find the superchargers along the way. Again, Key West isn't that great of a place. Um, but you can see even still, there's going to be superchargers going, that, going down there. So I don't have to worry about getting to Key West because there's going to be a supercharger. Key West is like super far out, right? So um, let me just show you. So this button down here, this little car button is also going to be an important button because that's how you go throughout your menus, okay? So this car button is going to give you pretty much every menu that you can think about in terms of the car. So you're going to have the controls. This is just your basic stuff. So your lights, um, whether you want child lock on, window lock, you can open up your glove box from here. You can fold your mirrors, of course, when you're not driving. <laughs> your windshield wipers, 
you can adjust your mirrors and adjust your steering wheel in this column um, the recording you can set the recording length um, century mode again when you're not driving um, you can actually have that century mode on um, then the next menu is uh, your pedals and your steering it's exactly what it's talking about so your pedals and your steering it's gonna be how hard, how fast you want to accelerate. So if you're, for, if, if if any of you guys have a sport mode in your in your conventional car, or like a um, let's say a comfort mode or something like that, generally it's gonna be a sport mode. That's exactly what this is. Instead, it's chill and standard. So chill is is gonna be a very relaxed. It's gonna be a low accelerating. Um, it's gonna be more like a tamed version of. Uh, 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 of your car so chill you're not going to accelerate as hard even if you press the gas all the way down now remember this car is, still has a lot of 0 60 time so don't get it twisted but chill is kind of the mode that i keep it in and the mode that you should keep it in in terms of range standard is where it's going to be your sport mode standard is going to be hey you want to go all out let's go <laughs> that's standard uh, the steering wheel mode, I, I keep mine in sport. Sport is going to be a stiffer steering wheel. So when you turn the wheel, it's not going to shake as as readily. It's going to give you some resistance. Um, of course, my sports drivers know that that's a, that's a good thing. Um, again, you know, it's kind of up to your preference. Uh, comfort is exactly the opposite. You know, if you have a really loose steering wheel when you're turning, when you're when you're maneuvering, that's kind of the comfort. Again, it's up to you. Uh, when you talk about this uh, part right here where it says hold, I, I do that because I want regenerative braking. So the way regenerative braking works is if you're familiar with like maybe say a, uh, if you're familiar with like a manual car, then this will make all of the sense in the world to you. You know how when you're up top in the gears, let's say you're on sixth gear, fifth gear, whatever, and you're coming to a stop and you start downshifting your gears all the way down to one, and the engine is slowing the car down as you downshift, it's the same exact concept except without the changing of the gears. So regenerative braking is whenever I let my foot off the gas, the car is going to start to slow itself down. Now that's a huge benefit if you know what I'm saying because I don't have to use my regular brakes. My engine is going to slow the car down. So the difference between the, 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 the we call it the engine braking with the manual car and the regenerative braking is that, that when the engine is slowing down a manual car, that energy that's created from it slowing down is just lost. It doesn't go anywhere. With regenerative braking, that energy is now coming back to the battery. Now, don't get me twisted. It's not like it's going to take you, you know, like right now I'm at 14%. Uh, if I just let the engine brake, it's not going to bring me to 100% or something like that. But it is, it, it's something that you should know, okay? Um, charging is exactly what you think. Um, so in this menu, you set your charging station, kind of like uh, you set how much you you know how, how far you want to go as you can see I charged to 97% um, charging for a V you know now there's two ways that you can charge everybody you know maybe you may not know maybe you do know you can charge it at your house the the difference between charging and filling your tank up in a conventional car you find the cheaper gas stations by riding around and figuring out, okay, Exxon is cheaper today than Chevron. Okay, tomorrow it's going to be Marathon. You have to ride around. You have to look and, oh, yeah, okay, I know 7-Eleven has a deal. I'll go there. With charging, on the other hand, in terms of supercharging, it's about what time you charge. So right now, for me, it's 1 o'clock. So 1.44, 2 o'clock. So for me, this is the hottest time of the day. This is also the most busiest time of day. As you can see, there's nothing but cars out here. So this is going to be the most expensive time to charge. Okay. So I'm going to pay a lot more if I charge right now as compared to if I charge early in the morning. Uh, so like 12, 12, you know, early in the morning, like 12 to 8, 8 a.m. Those are called off-peak hours. If you charge during peak hours, you're going to pay a lot. If you charge during off-peak hours, you're not going to pay a lot. Okay? Now, when we say a lot, I'm talking about $25, $30. 
uh, that's peak times compared to what you see here and that's seven dollars and that's for me earlier i was pretty low as you can see i, I like i kind of go a little bit low i go to like 13 15 12 percent um again you know hey you know everybody's different uh, my tolerance is a little bit different i, I kind of know how to work with it but hey look you know we all have our own situations so uh, this is where you can kind of set your limit. Where do you want to charge at? Generally, you want to stay under 90, but, you know, about 90% is where you want to charge. Like, if you know, hey, today is going to be a busy day. I'm going to be working. I'm going to be going out. But realistically, you want to stay between 20 and 80% for the most part. You really don't want to go too far over that. Again, you see I charged to 97%. I knew what I was doing today. My car hasn't stopped. <laughs> so I've been going, going, going. You can see I was in Davie. Anybody that knows Florida knows that that was the city above. I'm coming down to Miami. I'm going back up to West Palm Beach. So that's kind of what I do. Uh, that's just the way that I like to drive. I like to drive long trips. So, hey, uh, so that's, that's, that's that. Autopilot is exactly what we're doing now. You want to turn these on, get your risk tolerance. So autopilot just... It's basically, the, uh, the term autopilot, just think of it as cruise control. It's not that serious. It's, it's basically cruise control. Imagine cruise control, but instead of you having to turn the wheel, it turns the wheel for you. So, of course, my other hand is here. My hand is here. Um, it's going to turn the wheel. It's basically going to stay in your lane is what I would call it. So that's cruise control. Now you do have a, a feature called full self-driving. Um, if you rent the car, you won't be able to use that feature. But if you do buy the car, if you buy it brand new, you can get that feature for 15,000. If you buy it used, then uh, you, know, you have to get it as a subscription model. And that's $200 at the time of this video. Um, but it's kind of up to you. For me, I, I feel like it's overkill. Uh, because this is working just fine as you can see I've been able to film the whole video and not really worry about it cars are passing cars are I'm going around cars are kind of good but you know there is benefits now you do see it blinking right now it's blinking because it's saying hey you need to put your hands on the wheel your hands haven't been on the wheel so now we we're starting to suspect that you're you might be asleep you might not be paying attention and what happens is it starts blinking it gets mad at you because ultimately what it's a security feature it wants us to know it wants to know if you're awake or if you're asleep okay um, because if you're using a feature like this it's really easy to kind of zone out and just kind of be your own person <laughs> so uh, that's one of the security features so as you can see uh, I had to change lanes so I had to disengage disengage or come out of cruise control is exactly what you think all you do is you either press the brake or you pull this up or you can just pull the wheel like i did um it's kind of up to you what you choose to do uh but you know they're, 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 those are options the next thing you see i still have my turn my blinker on I'm, i did that on purpose i promise i'm not that type of driver that just rides around with my blinker uh so your blinkers you have two different cameras um Two, they're called blind spot cameras so you have the left one and then of course you have the right one okay so it just shows you the blind spot so as I'm driving you know when I need to make a right or something like that I can always keep my blink you know when you do use your blinkers um, you're able to kind of see your blind spot um, and you know to turn it, it you can kind of see how that car is turning red um, the car turned red because, you know, if you do have the full self-driving, um, it will change lanes for you. Um, but it is, it's just, it's basically like letting you know, Hey, there's a car in your blind spot. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, this is pretty much, that's pretty much all you really need to know uh, to just get started. This is like a quick start guide. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to show you, uh, have any questions go ahead and put them down in the comments let me know i'll make a quick video on it other than that um i do have a link in the description um a lot of uh, I, I do want to say i do have a link in the description because right now a lot of ride, ride share drivers are, are, are losing their lives over senseless killings 
Um, and, you know, a lot of guys say, you know, I have protection in my car. I have a gun or I have this or I have that. And that's how they try to protect themselves. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that your family is protected. So I have gone ahead and partnered with a company called Ethos. So the link is down in the description. Um, it literally takes about five minutes to go ahead and get something. This is in terms of life insurance, because a lot of times we protect ourselves with guns and, and, and weapons and stuff like that. But we don't necessarily protect our family with actual real money just in case that guy does get the drop on you, just in case something does happen to you. So, um, you know, if you need it, go ahead, look at it. If you already have some, go ahead and look at it. Nevertheless, uh, that'll be in the description. Other than that, guys, if you like the content, go ahead and hit, get it. Give me a like, give me a like for this content. It motivates me. Leave some comments. Let me know what's going on. Um, and, uh, yeah, hit the subscribe button. I'm a new channel. I hope to grow a little bit bigger. Uh, but yeah, I just want to continue to make videos like this, uh, just helping out other drivers and just helping out other people. So, all right, guys, thanks. It's been great. Have a good one.